So welcome back everyone to our series on statistical mechanics. In this video, we're going to prove uh, two important statements uh, that thermodynamics gives us from the uh, second law and our definition of the thermodynamic temperature. The first statement that we are going uh, to prove is that if two bodies are at thermodynamic equilibrium, uh, then they have identical temperature. Then the second one that we are going to prove is that energy flows from hot to cold temperatures. So the zeroth law of thermodynamics uh, goes like this. If I have a system A, we'll call this system A, and it's connected and it's in thermal equilibrium with some system C, which is then connected to a system B, which is also in thermal uh, equilibrium. Uh, so A is in thermal equilibrium with C, C is in thermal equilibrium with A, and C is also in thermal equilibrium with B. Then what the zeroth law of thermodynamics will tell you is that A and B will also be in thermal equilibrium. So in one of the first videos I did in the series, I then asserted that the temperature of A would have to be equal to the temperature of C and would have to be the temperature of B. I didn't prove this. Um, so today we're going to ask that question, what exactly is the relationship between two systems uh, temperature when they are in uh, thermal equilibrium with each other? And in particular, this is going to be a way for us to justify our definition of temperature that I wrote down previously. So one over the temperature is equal to the partial derivative of entropy with respect to energy while we keep the volume and the particle number fixed. So to study this question about the relationship between the temperatures of two bodies that are in thermal equilibrium, we'll study two bodies interacting with each other. We'll call it the first system um, A, and in particular, it will have energy EA, it will have temperature TA, and it will have entropy SA. And it will be interacting with a system B. And this system will also have an energy EB, and a temperature TB, and a entropy SB. So the system is interacting. So in general, the total energy of this system, which I'll call ET, will be the energy of the individual system A's energy plus the individual energy kept in B, but we'll also have an interaction term between the two systems in general. But what's going to happen here is that EA is going to scale like the volume of A and EB is going to scale like the volume of B and EAB is going to scale like the area of contact. So I'll just call that A. So it's this little slice here. And basically what we're going to see is that these two energies are going to drown out this one. So for the duration of this analysis, what we're gonna do is we're just going to assume uh, that contribution uh, to the energy isn't important. What we're also going to do is we're going to use the fact that entropy itself is extensive. And so what that will mean is that the total entropy will be equal to uh, the entropy of the subsystem A plus the entropy of the subsystem B. If we skipped ahead a little bit, we could see an intuitive reason uh, for why this might be the case. So what I'm about to do is not necessarily a proof, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to appeal to the Boltzmann entropy that I wrote down for you in the last video. So the entropy of a system, where I will call this uh, S of T for our total system, is going to be equal to uh, the Boltzmann constant KB times the natural logarithm of the total number of energetically microstates uh, WT. So for each subsystem, what we're going to find is that they will individually have a set number of energetically um, accessible microstates, uh, and we will call this WA and WB. So this is more or less a counting problem. If you were to look at the energy of your subsystem A, for example, uh, this, this subsystem will have a certain number of microstates 
uh, that correspond uh, to this energy Ea. So the fundamental principle of counting will tell us that the total number of microstates that are accessible to our system of our two bodies interacting is equal to the product of Wa times Wb. So the number of microstates accessible for system A times the number of microstates accessible for system B um, is equal to the number of total microstates allowed by our total system. So if we plug this into the definition of entropy that we have, what we see is that ST is equal to KB times the natural logarithm of WA times WB. And of course, by the properties of the natural logarithm, this then becomes a sum WB here, and we identify that as S of A plus S of B. Now, I haven't provided a proof for why we should be using the Boltzmann entropy, and all I've really done is shown that the definition I gave to you in the last video is in fact in extensive in terms of its definition, uh, but I certainly find it uh, intuitive to go back and appeal to the sort of microscopic origins of entropy or how we calculate um, entropy from the microscopic properties um, of the entropy. So anyways, with this information now, what do we have as the relationship between the temperature Ta and Tb? So what we're going to do is again appeal to the variational statement of the second law of thermodynamics. Now, if you aren't familiar with that, you should go back and watch the previous video in the series. But basically, the idea is, is that if we impose some internal constraint on our system, then the equilibrium configuration uh, of our actual system will be one in which the entropy is maximized. So for a generic constraint uh, lambda, we might write this as the partial derivative uh, of the entropy with respect to the internal constraint lambda, and this will be the total entropy here, um, is equal to zero, while the second derivative with respect to lambda uh, would have to be negative, which would give us a maximum. But another way to say this that is equally as useful is to say the following. Suppose we have a system that is in thermodynamic equilibrium and we artificially impose an internal constraint uh, to perturb it away from equilibrium while holding uh, the other thermodynamic variables constant. Then because of the variational statement uh, with respect to internal constraints, then whatever internal constraint that we're tweaking uh, or changing a little bit will then cause our entropy um, to decrease. So any perturbation uh, from equilibrium that we artificially insert will result in a change in entropy that is negative. Okay, so I realized while I was going over the footage that I made a mistake here. This is less than or equal uh, to zero here. So the total differential of the entropy for the total system, I should have written that as well. Um, so let me just cross this out. The total differential for the total system would then have to be less than or equal uh, to zero in the way that we're approaching this problem. In this thought experiment, we're going to hold the total energy fixed. We're going to hold the other thermodynamic variables fixed. All we are doing is we're going to adjust some internal constraint. And one such internal constraint will be when our systems do come to equilibrium, there will be an equilibrium configuration where we have some energy on both sides of the system. There will be some uh, equilibrium energy for A and equilibrium energy B that brings the whole system into thermodynamic equilibrium. So what we could do is we could think of lambda, our internal constraint that we play with, as us artificially playing with the energy of subsystem A. Now, if we play with the energy of subsystem A and we know that energy is conserved, then we know that any change to the energy 
um, in A is equal to the minus of the energy in B. So again, using the fact that entropy is extensive, so I will write it down again, we have S of T is equal to um, the S of uh, the subsystem A plus the entropy of the subsystem B. Then we will write the total differential um, in the following way. So it's instructed then to um, rewrite this uh, total differential, uh, where I'll fix this T here, um, in terms of these variables here, so we can get something in terms of the temperature. So we know that this is equal to the partial derivative of the entropy on the subsystem A with respect to the energy on subsystem A times the total differential of the energy on subsystem A plus the derivative for the entropy on subsystem B with the energy in B uh, times DEB. Now we identify these two as one over the temperature of A and this guy is one over the temperature of B so putting everything together and using the fact that this is the negative of this, we get a very important um, equation. So ds of t, so the differential of the total entropy of the system, is then equal to 1 over the temperature of A minus 1 over the temperature of B uh, times dE. A. Okay, so we know that uh, dst is less than or equal to zero in our thought experiment. And because it's less than or equal to zero, and we are leaving uh, DEA to be arbitrary, so we're perturbing the system you know, very slightly away from its thermodynamic equilibrium, and we know that in this thought experiment then, that the total differential or the difference um, in the entropy, the entropy would have to decrease if we slightly perturb it away from equilibrium. Um, so this is less than or equal to zero. Uh, so this whole equation has to be less than or equal to zero. That is regardless of the choice of DEA. And this is all because of the way we've set up, set up this thought experiment. So the only way this can be satisfied for, for slightly perturbing our system away from equilibrium would be then if TA is equal to TB. So the second law of thermodynamics tells us that two bodies that are in e thermodynamic equilibrium with each other will then have to have the same temperature. So this is a demonstration for why our choice of our definition of temperature um, satisfies the zeroth law of thermodynamics. And it is one demonstration for why it is an appropriate choice for our definition of temperature. So now let's do a, another thought experiment. We're going to assume that instead of our two bodies um, starting out in equilibrium, uh, we're going to assume that the temperature of A just does not equal the temperature of B. So this is a non-equilibrium scenario. So in particular, this will be a natural thermodynamic process of these two bodies coming to equilibrium. So what this means is that the total change in the entropy The total change in the entropy uh, will have to be greater than zero. So going back to our previous function um, that was, we sort of derived it generically and then imposed our thought experiment on it. Our previous uh, equation, just to rewrite it here so we have it in front of us. So the differential of the entropy of the total system is equal to one over uh, TA minus one over uh, TB. TB times D 
E A. Now we know that this has to be greater than zero and we might choose any possible choice for D E A. We don't know how um, energy is going to be flowing. So to satisfy this inequality, let's say that T A is greater than T B. So what does this say about DEA? What it says then is that DEA would then have to be less than zero. Now, if we then had TA is less than TB, what we would then get is that DEB would have to be greater than zero to satisfy this. So what we have shown is that assuming TA and TB are not equal, is that energy goes from hot to cold. So this is something you hear all the time, just sort of said out loud. Uh, now we have uh, proven it based off of the laws of thermodynamics. Uh, but that's it for uh, today's video. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.